things. Um, we are we're going to try and put a group together for Peru for 2017. So you've got all of this year to think about it, and uh, it'll probably be in the spring or in the fall of 2017. But it's a wonderful trip. It, it's been on my bucket list for many years. And uh, if you're interested in doing it, uh, you know, come and talk to us. Uh, uh, we'll be getting out details in the coming months. It's still lots of time to think about it, lots of time to prepare. But it's good to have uh, a date down the road and we can book some group space. So instead of Cuba, it'll be Peru next time. Um, just let me tell you a little bit about oh, a couple of things. So we're going to be at the um, Live to uh, one, Love to Live to 100 on Wednesday. So uh, come and talk to us there. We also have a Carp Etobicoke travel show that you're all invited to. Carp, uh, Carp Saga members are invited to. It's going to be at Lambton Golf and Country Club. February 16th? 17th. It's a Wednesday. So uh, come talk to us. We'll sign you up. You have to RSVP because uh, it, we have to let Carp Etobicoke know how many Carp members are coming. But uh, let us know and you're, you, can, uh, you can come and join us. And one of the featured uh, speakers will be G uh, Adventures, who I went on this trip with. So uh, if you're interested in hearing more about what they're doing, uh, come out to the carpet of your show. So let me just start out uh, by saying um, this was a wonderful trip. It uh, was one of it was on my bucket list for many many years. Just uh, it, the opportunity came up, I signed up for it, and uh, you have to apply for these things if they're travel agent. And I was accepted, so I jumped all over it, and I went, and it was a wonderful time. Uh, it does require some physical exercise, but I'll tell you, my mother did this trip when she was 82. And so, you know, anybody can do this. You just have to pace yourself and know your limits. Don't overexert yourself, obviously. You don't want to be hiking up uh, to the top of the mountains, but you can get to Machu Picchu very easily. It's a bus ride up to the main gate, and then there's there's a bit of a, a, a walking path that goes all the way through the ruins, and you can do it that way. And my mother's quite active. She's, she still travels a bit, but uh, she did it when she was 82, and uh, she didn't need the oxygen, which everybody warned her she might need, and I'll get into that a little bit more. Uh, let me tell you about uh, the tour company I went with. The tour company I went with is called G Adventures, and G Adventures is a Canadian company which has become international. <laughs> so when we reach the village, this is the lady that came out to greet us and take us up to the, uh, and that is our guide, one of our guides. The guides, again, are, are really wonderful. This particular guide that you just saw is a professor at the local um, the university. And uh, he's an expert on Incan history, so he was uh, very informative. And this is the main courtyard, and uh, you can see the stalls in the back. The sun really wasn't out that, out that day, so you really get uh, a great view of everything. And sorry about that, I kind of lost my balance. You might get a little seasick watching some of these, but. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. But these are the uh, stalls over here. So uh, you can see that they go right from the uh, the people who make it right to the stalls. And uh, these are the uh, alpacas where they get the wool. <laughs> I, well, you're not supposed to drink when you're at altitude. So it, it wasn't the drink, it was the altitude sickness. I think that's what it was. I was short of breath there. And this doesn't go on much longer, but uh, and these are these are the women that were uh, uh, showing us, uh, giving us the demonstrations. What language do they speak? 
they have their own native language, so it, it, you know, you have, they, our guide was able to speak. Uh, Peru is uh, Spanish, I believe, so mainly Spanish. But, So that night we went to our hotel in Urubamba. We were, uh, it was a nice uh, hotel. This is called the comfort level um, the tour. It's not real luxury, it's not high end luxury, it's, but it's, it's uh, the highest end for G, G Adventures. So I would put it as a three or four star hotel, uh, but very comfortable and clean. Uh, well, it, was, uh, it wasn't uh, the Ritz, but uh, it was very, uh, accommodating. Uh, and so we spent the night there, we had dinner there. The next morning we got up and jumped in the coach again and we went to Olante Tambo ruins, uh, the Moray ruins, and then the salt pans um, in uh, Morass. Then we had lunch in a, a, a restaurant, it was an outdoor restaurant, it was a beautiful day. And then that evening we went for a traditional Pache Manka uh, restaurant, and uh, I'll explain a little bit about that uh, later. So here's Urubamba, that's our hotel. Cusco's down there. We went all the way over here. Now we went up to Olante Tambo. Olante Tambo was uh, a fortress uh, built by the Incans, and, um, uh, and, and beautiful uh, and amazing. Uh, uh, pieces of, uh, it's almost the equivalent of pyramids, not quite that large um, that you might see in the um, in Egypt. And then we went to uh, Maras uh, for the salt uh, salt uh, ponds, and in between there, there was a, a, the, the, the other ruins that we stopped at here, and then we ended up in Urubamba. So th th that's the, the day that we spent, th these are the Piece, uh, these are the, um, the the depressions, the Incan depressions that we went to see, and it, it's very. This is where it gets really spooky because <laughs> they were able to develop these depressions, and at the bottom would have a different micro system, in e different ecosystem than above. the The temperature difference between the top where we were standing and the bottom of those is about 15 degrees. Uh, so uh, they use that to experiment on, on uh, developing grains and plants and things like that. So they were way ahead of, I mean, they, they were geneticists. Uh, essentially, they were um, uh, uh, modifying genes to develop hardier and more fruitful plants. And, and that, those were, that's where they did their experiments. This is the Olante Tambo ruins. Uh, there's about 150 to 200 steps that you walk up to the very top. That can be a little bit tiring, but we all made it, and uh, none of us died. Uh, and then at the bottom, there is this wonderful courtyard and uh, with llamas and uh, alpacas roaming. Uh, and then the, the other uh, picture is the salt pans in morass. And, uh, this is a community effort. Each family has a pond, and uh, it, it's all fed by a spring that comes out of the mountain and has been generating very salty water for uh, thousands of years, literally thousands of years. These are pre-Incan ponds, and uh, each one, certain, they fill the pond up, let the water evaporate, cultivate the salt, and then they they sell it, and they, it's some of the uh, most famous uh, ki uh, uh, chefs in the world use salt from 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 these salt ponds. So very famous uh, um, uh, uh, salt ponds are attraction in, in the Sacred Valley. And on our way to the salt ponds, we were at the other ruins, and in the parking lot, our guide met two. Um, Two young young guys that he knew he knew their parents. Uh, he was a different generation, of course, 
but they were hitching a ride back down to the salt mines, and they said, could we get a ride with you, because uh, we got dropped off here, and we're looking for a way back. So we gave them a ride, he asked us if we, if we, if we wouldn't mind, and on the way down, they played music for us. And uh, I have a video of their entertainment on our website if, uh, if you're interested in listening to it. But it was great. It was Everybody got into it, and uh, everybody was clapping and singing. And the, the 20 or 30 minute bus ride down to the salt pads went by in a flash. And um, this is where we had our lunch. It was an outdoor restaurant. Uh, it was a restaurant with an outdoor terrace. and. Uh, they set up a table especially for our group, and I don't know if you can see in the back, but they had llamas and alpacas in the back just grazing on the lawn, and they had parrots uh, in the trees, and uh, it, it was quite something to have uh, a nice outdoor lunch after a day of touring. And this is the um, Pachamanca restaurant that we, we went to, and it's um, kind of like the Peruvian lua. So, what they do is they dig a pit, and they put in coal, <coughs> and then they put in leaves and, and the meat uh, in layers, and they allow it, allow it to cook for uh, you know, six hours or something, and then when they pull it out, it's just fall off the bone tender, and it was really delicious. And uh, we, the, the chef came out and gave a presentation, it's about 15 minutes, uh, about, what, uh, about the history of the, 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 the meal, and where it came from. It, it came from Spanish, actually, but uh, it was very interesting. And uh, here's another short video. I hope this works. Again, I apologize for the jittery. But I find that videos give you a sense of, of what it's like. You, you can get a sense of how much climbing and hiking that might be involved. That's our other guy, Kike. He's the one that carried the guy off the mountain, so he's a bit bigger than the other one. But a, a really good guy. So this is from the bus. We're just heading past the market into the uh, ruins. And you'll see the ruins as we come through the main gate here. And they're, they're the ruins. It's a little bit hard to see, but you'll see them a little bit closer. But there's steps that go all the way up to the top. And at the top, there was a fortress. And that was uh, kind of uh, where the, the wealthy Incans uh, lived. And how they built this is, you know, anybody's guess. Again, I think it's aliens who came in and lifted all these rocks because some of the boulders at the very top are, are huge. I mean, they have to be several tons. So this is the walk up. Now you can see it, it, it can be pretty daunting to go all the way up in one sprint, but our guide took us up you know, several flights at a time, and it was quite leisurely. I think uh, we, did, we took our time to get to the top, and it was uh, uh, very manageable for everybody and beautiful views from the top as well. And each of these terraces was used for growing crops as well. And in November, it's the beginning of their summer, right? But it's also the beginning of the rainy season. So we were quite lucky to get a very sunny day like this. Uh, the best time to go to Machu Picchu and Sacred Valley is probably from uh, August to November or from March to June. And then, you know, the summer months are their winter, so it, it gets a little bit colder there. It's still, it's still doable in the summertime. Uh, but you wouldn't have the warm days like you, you do in the, in the shoulder season or the summer. Now, from December to February, it's very rainy. So you, you might encounter some rain. And we actually encountered about two or three hours of rain when we were in Machu Picchu. So 
That's just something to keep an eye, uh, keep in mind of when you're planning your trip. So you'll see that some of these cliffs are very steep, and uh, everybody was a little bit nervous about getting to the edge. But uh, you know, nobody fell over, and we brought everybody back. But it, it really does make for some wonderful views. And all along, the guide's telling us all about the history of this particular era, area and uh, these particular rooms. And I think that's about a couple more minutes. And then I think I'm going to stop it here because we're running a little short of time. And uh, if you want to see more of these, we can certainly um, you can certainly go to our website. We we have them on there. So day four, uh, again we got up in the morning. It was around seven o'clock for breakfast. Uh, breakfast was included. Uh, we jumped on a the coach again. It was a different coach, but we went to the old Ante Tambo train station, which was about. For uh, less than a half an hour away, and we took a train from Olante Tambo into Aguas Caliente. And Aguas Caliente is the small tourist town at the base of Machu Picchu. And the train is a very scenic train ride. It goes through along the river uh, into the mountains. Now, contrary to what you would think, we're not going up into the mountains. We're actually going down into the mountains. So. Uh, it's a little bit, a um, little bit uh, 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 deceiving that way. Um, there are no vehicles in Aguas Caliente, so you do have to walk to your hotel. Uh, it was a 10-minute walk carrying luggage. What they suggested was that uh, we just carry what we needed for one day and um, uh, for, uh, for one night and for a hiking up in Machu Picchu because we would come back to uh, Urubamba and pick up the rest of our luggage the next day. And that was very helpful. And uh, so we arrived at Aguas Caliente. It's about a 45 minute hour train ride. Not very long, but very scenic. It goes by very fast. They have a nice service there. They serve you coffee and, and uh, anything if you want to eat. There are three levels of um, uh, travel, train travel. There's coach. There's premium and there's deluxe. So we went on the premium up and the deluxe on the way down. And uh, it, it was uh, quite an experience. Uh, we had the rest of the day. We arrived around 11 o'clock in Aguas Caliente. And we had the rest of the day to do what we wanted to do. Uh, there were a couple of options. Uh, you could do a rainforest tour. You could go to a museum. You could go to hot springs. I just uh, had a nap and went for uh, a coffee and a lunch. And it's a beautiful little city, to, uh, town to walk around. With. There's no vehicles, everything's very walkable. Oh, what I did also do is I went for a massage. Massages are $10 an hour. And they are amazing, especially if you've been hiking for three days. Uh, I, I, I went for a half an hour. I should have gone for two hours. It was, it was just great. Um, and just to let you know, it's, Ola de Tambo, that we, that we took the train, is down there. And the train goes along the river all the way up to Aguas Caliente here. So it, it, it's a very scenic uh, um, uh, train ride, I think. Yeah, actually, I have a video of here. It, this one's a shorter one. So. Um, and that's the train we went on. Jeez. <coughs> no? Yeah. I have to press the arrow here, right? Press the arrow, does it go? There you go. There you go. <laughs> so this is a train, this is the countryside at the beginning. And there are a couple of, this is the easy way to get to Machu Picchu. There's a, there's a hike called Hiking the Inca Trail, which is four days of hiking and uh, overnight camping. 
You can do that as well. I decided I'd rather take the train. Train was a little bit more comfortable. Only 45 minutes. Four day hike, 45 minutes on the train. And I, I think I, I took the, I made the right choice. And this is the river that you follow. And you'll notice that the water is going this way. So you are actually going down the valley into Machu Picchu. And the interesting thing about Machu Picchu is that the, it's the only Incan ruins that were never discovered by the Spanish. And the Spanish, whenever they found Incan ruins, they would tear them down and take all the artifacts, ship them back to Spain, or destroy them, or and then they'd build a church, right? And, um, oh, and this is the start of the uh, Inca Trail. So you cross that bridge, and you start hiking up this path. And four days later, you're where we are. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so uh, Machu Picchu is the only place that wasn't discovered by the uh, Spanish and is relatively uh, untouched. And uh, it, you see some, some wonderful ruins up there. Um, and uh, very, they, they take very good care of it. They only allow a certain number of people into the park each day. Uh, there are certain areas where they only allow even fewer people. So uh, they regulate it, uh, and they've taken very good care of it. So, and this is the scenery that you see all the way up. It's, it's really wonderful. So the next day, is Machu Picchu, and this is always the highlight of the trip. And the thing that uh, I, I, I kind of regretted was the, the day in Aguas Caliente, the day before, you had the option of going up to Machu Picchu in the afternoon. And I, I should have done that, uh, just because the lighting in the afternoon is different than the lighting in the morning, and you get a different view. It's extra, I think it's uh, $25 for the bus ride and another $25 for the gate entrance, but very doable. I mean, they, they, and you have the extra time. I just got talked into going for lunch instead, and I missed that, <laughs> missed that opportunity. But so the next morning you get up, and everybody wants to catch the sunrise in Machu Picchu. So the key is to get up early and try and catch the first bus. But you've got you know 500 other people that have the same thing in mind. We got up at 4:30 in the morning. We had our breakfast, left the hotel at 5, and we still had to stand in line. So, um, and when we got up there, it was cloudy, so we didn't see the sun, oh, sun, yeah. sunrise anyways. But it was, it, was, it was actually fun to be part of that experience of everybody going up there, lining up and catching the bus going up. And uh, the, it, with this particular tour, we had another tour guide give us an hour and a half tour of the ruins itself. And, uh, and then we have the rest of the morning to, for ourselves. And there are options that you can do. We took the option to hike to the Sun Gate. And the hike to the Sun Gate is about a 45 minute hike up a hill. And uh, you know, anybody can do it. It just, uh, you know, you just have to pace yourself. For me, it was every 10 minutes, I'd have to stop for two or three minutes to catch my breath. But you recover very quickly. I, I find that it wasn't, it wasn't like you were tired the rest of the way. You were just tired for a few minutes until you got oxygen back into your lungs. And then you could go back on for, you felt fresh and reinvigorated for another 10 minutes. <laughs> and then you felt exhausted. But um, the Sun Gate, you know that Inca Trail hike that I mentioned, that four day? Uh, the Sun Gate is the first time that you see Machu Picchu from that hike. So it's a point where great exhilaration, obviously. Four days hiking and sleeping in tents. You finally get to see your destination. And the rest of it is downhill to Machu Picchu. So that, that's the significance of the sun. Moon. And you have wonderful views up there as well. So we spent a lot of time at uh, Machu Picchu. I have a short video of Machu Picchu. I can show it. Well, it's a long video, but I'll show you a part <laughs> of it. And, um, and then around 12.30, it started to rain. So we went back down to Aguas Caliente. Uh, we took the train back to Olante Tambo, uh, picked up our coach, um, went back to the hotel to pick up the rest of our luggage, and then drove to Cusco, and arrived at Cusco around 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So it was 
It was a long day, it was a hectic day, but I'm telling you, those six, seven, eight hours in Machu Picchu, I'll never forget. I will never, ever forget that. It was uh, one of the most uh, exhilarating experiences I've ever had. So there's Aguas Caliente, and this is the bus ride. Uh, and you'll see the switchbacks. And, and that, those switchbacks are real switchbacks. Now, the other way you can hike from Aguas Caliente, if you don't want to do the four-day hike, you can do the three-hour hike. And it goes from Agu Aguas Caliente, and it goes straight up here. And we saw a few people, younger people, obviously, that, mm -hmm. that had done it. And uh, they were they were hot and sweaty and tired by the time they made it up. But for them, it was a, it was a great experience. It was a challenge, and it was a, it was an experience. So that was the fun part of it. And here's uh, we're standing in line here. We we didn't stand in line for long. It was, 15 minutes at the most, and the buses were coming and, and everything, and there was a real sort of carnival or festival atmosphere in the lineup, everybody had fun. And here are some shots of uh, Machu Picchu. That's the main ruins. Uh, this is the view from the Sun Gate. This is our group. Um, at all but three decided to make the hike up to Aguas Calientes, so you know, they, 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 they all managed to do it, and they all felt very um, satisfied and uh, like they had accomplished something uh, when they got there. And going down takes 15 minutes, of course. <laughs> it's, it's a lot easier going down. So I'll show you parts of this video. It's, it's longer than the others, but this is really the fun. Now, what do I do? There you go. So this is the um, bus ride up, and it was a it was rainy when we started going up, and uh, these are the switchbacks. So it, it can be if you're sitting on the far side coming down, it can be a little bit a little bit uh, tense. You're looking straight down the cliffs, but they they haven't had too many accidents. <laughs> Now this is the main gate, and there's a hotel here. If you want to stay at this hotel, it, it's I think it's $800 a night, but it's it, you know you don't have to worry about you know taking the bus. <laughs> but uh, and, and this is the main entrance, main pathway into the ruins, and then everybody disperses after that. So it may look crowded here, but once you get into the main uh, ruins, uh, it. it it, people spread out of it. And we had a wonderful guide again. The, the Key Adventures really, and with um, National Geographic, the requirements for the guides have gone up significantly. So uh, you'll have really good guides that, you know, will, will, will give you a real history lesson about the world. And there is so much history there. all the walls are. Um, there's a calendar building which uh, can tell you the dates of, uh, of the year. So it, it's a sundial, a major sundial, and it goes um, 365 days. And you realize that our calendar, we have to adjust it every four years, right? Every four years we have a leap year, and so we have to adjust it. The uh, Aztec calendar, you had to adjust it every thousand years and then it ended, right? Uh, 2000, and, well, when was the world supposed to end? That was the end of the Aztec calendar. Yeah. Anyways, the, the Incan calendar has to be adjusted once every 2000 years. So that's how, it's got to be aliens, right? I mean, who else can do that with that kind of precision? It, 
There's no other explanation as far as I'm concerned. And this is the guardhouse. It's one of the beautiful views. Unfortunately, at, the good thing the good thing about the weather in Machu Picchu is that it's constantly changing. So if it's cloudy, just wait a couple of minutes. The sun will come back out. This is part of our group. This is uh, the, the iconic spot to take your photos from. And another reason I would like to come up the day before was brilliantly sunny, so it would have been even better. And I, I think I'll just stop it here. There's a bit more of it, but uh, again, I think you get the idea of what, uh, what it's like up there. The title of what? The music? That was, um, what, 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 what? It's a Gar Simon and Garfunkel song. It'll come to me. It'll come to me and I'll, I'll I, I have it on my computer, so I'll get it for you after. Okay, what is it called? Oh, Jesus. Yeah, I have to look it up because it was so, uh, it was so elusive. It, yeah. Sure. anymore. Isn't that amazing? And it's still standing. And everything, and, and the small bricks are, you can understand, you can do that by hand. But in certain parts they have massive boulders that are 10, 12 feet high by 20 feet. And they are, you cannot put a piece of paper between them. They're, they're just so perfectly carved. In Olam Te Tambo, the, at the top of the ruins there, there's some real examples of uh, some of the, the architecture and amazing things. And uh, aliens, I'm sure it's aliens. Or helicopters. Yeah, or helicopters, maybe one or the other. Aliens with helicopters, I think that's what it was. So we were in Cusco and, um, I'm sorry? Oh, I'm getting called off, okay. I'll, I'll wrap it up, I'll wrap it up. Um, Cusco, we spent a day there. Was, uh, we went to a cooking class, which was I almost missed, but ended up doing. Uh, was a wonderful talk. I was going to go take my two-hour massage, or, but I got I ended up going here. It was, it was just a wonderful experience. Four-hour cooking class. Can you imagine me at a four-hour cooking class and having fun? I, it was one of the highlights of the trip, for sure. And uh, this is uh, this is Cusco, and then Cusco. We spent two days in Cusco. The next morning, day seven, we transferred. We went to the hotel around. Uh, went to the airport around noon. Flew into Lima. Had a dinner there. Flights out of Lima leave at two o'clock to three o'clock in the morning. So when they say day eight, that's day eight. <laughs> that's day eight, right? So keep that in mind. Uh, it's going to be a long day uh, on your last day because uh, the dinner was wonderful. We went out and, uh, and uh, had a wonderful time. And then uh, we all went to the airport around uh, 1 o'clock in the morning, caught our flight, got into Toronto around 10 o'clock the next morning. So that's it. Um, just a couple of questions. Lola and I went on a fabulous cruise in the Greek islands. Turkey and the Greek islands, and uh, we'd like to tell you about it if there's any interest. We can do another presentation like this about Turkey and the Greek islands. Can you show Murray if you're interested in seeing and hearing that? Okay, good. All right, well, we'll plan that for maybe middle of summertime, whenever there's an opening, we'll, we'll do another one. Yes? Just one question. While sure. you were there, do you get to see the Nazca lines at all? I didn't, but that's very easily done. You you can go, you'd have to go a day early or stay an extra day, but the Nazca lines, so one of one of the person uh, uh, in our group did the Nazca lines. You can always also go into the Amazon for a three-day excursion. She went, this lady, very spiritual, she went and saw a shaman in the Amazon, did the whole spiritual thing, and it was very exciting for her. So,